so before we actually go to the equivalent lateral force procedure let us quickly sweep through some of the provisions related to the structural model uh, modeling criteria prescribed in ASC 7 dash 16. So, some quick information for example, foundation of your structure you can assume some idealized support conditions uh, or you can also consider the foundation flexibility, but if you do that then chapter 19 of AC 7 will be applicable. Uh, the seismic weight of uh, the building will have an important role in the seismic analysis capital W. So, these are the things which should be included in uh, calculating the seismic weight dead load obviously, should be included 25 percent of the live load except these cases. The load of partition walls should be included in the seismic weight any permanent equipment uh, some part of the snow load if there is possibility of snow loading and if there is landscaping or roof gardens the load of those elements should also be included in the seismic weight. So, you sum all of those things you get capital W which is called the seismic weight right. So, it is different than the actual self weight of the building. This is an approximation of um, uh, what weight will be there when the seismic forces hit your structure. All the concrete and masonry elements in your computer model uh, the stiffness properties for cracks sections should be should be applied. Uh, these are uh, prescribed by the relevant building codes. So, if you are following ASC 7, you can take these values from ACI 318, right. Steel moment resisting frames, uh, if there are, then you should consider the panel zone deformations to overall story drift. Panel zone means the areas where beams and columns are overlapping. So, those uh, areas the deformation of those zones actually should be included in the analysis. Uh, if you have the horizontal irregularity type 1 a 1 b 4 or 5 which you up till now should have already established for your structure then you must go for a 3 dimensional computer model right. So, the 2 D simplification is not allowed in this particular case. In 3 dimensional model you should have a, at least 3 dynamic degrees of freedom at each floor. So, the mass of that floor uh, can be lumped at its center and that mass should have at least 3 degrees of freedom 2 translations in 2 horizontal directions and 1 vertical uh, uh, 1 rotation about the vertical axis right. So, this is the case when uh, you are not performing the the time history analysis in vertical direction. If you are performing a time history analysis or true dynamic analysis in vertical direction also, then you must have the dynamic degrees of freedom in, in the u z direction also vertical direction also right. P delta effects should not be included directly in the analysis they are considered indirectly in section this one. So, first you run the analysis without p delta and then there is a section which uh, guides us that whether there is a need to include p delta effect or not. So, you use the results uh, you get without p delta and then apply that section provision and check whether the amplification by the p delta effect is required or not right. So, we will discuss that provision also. An earthquake is always a three dimensional motion, it always have a third component which is vertical component. So, a rigorous dynamic analysis should already include that vertical component right, but sometimes we include sometimes we may not include in all those cases where the vertical loading or uh, fluctuation in vertical loading may cause some additional threat to our structure we must perform the the time history analysis in vertical direction. For example, base isolated buildings if for example, we have a structure where which is supported on some uh, isolation mechanism and if 
the uplift of a particular column uh, can cause a significant uh, threat to that isolation mechanism, then we must perform that analysis up down direction vertical time history analysis. Right? So, uh, it is mostly the decision of designer whether he, sh he want to include the vertical time history analysis or not. Uh, if you have a conventional structure uh, which has an adequate factor of safety in the gravity load, then you may not go for that option vertical time history analysis. Uh, but uh, in some special kinds of ground motions where the vertical component is significant. For example, uh, and your, your site is located in near fault area, you, you are located very close to epicenter, your site is subjected to deep earthquake and you are uh, located very close to epicenter. In all those cases, you can expect a ground motion having a significant vertical component. So, because in, the, in that case, the ground motion underneath you will may, may cause a uplift or sudden you can say up down direction vibrations in your structure. So, for all those cases you must go for vertical uh, time history analysis, uh, but for conventional structures you may ignore if you already have an adequate factor of safety for gravity load. There are provisions available about how you should construct the vertical ground motion spectrum. Once you construct the spectrum for, for horizontal direction, uh, the provisions are available how you modify it to convert it to vertical direction and then modify your ground motion according to that vertical spectrum and then apply those ground motions in the vertical direction. Floor diaphragms must be modeled using shell elements. Shell elements you might have already have an idea that they can model in plane and out of plane degrees of freedom. Flexural shear, axial and torsional deformations must be included in, uh, in the beams and columns, which means that we can use three dimensional frame element, which has six degrees of freedom at each node for modeling beams and columns. Right? So, in three dimensional structure, our uh, each column uh, can be subjected to six actions two moments in two directions, one axial load, one torsion uh, and uh, two shear forces. So, all six degrees of freedom they are corresponding to six actions. Actually plate element uh, have the degrees of freedom in the out of plane direction membrane element have degrees of freedom in only in in plane direction and shell have both in plane and out of plane. So, shell is uh, a more comprehensive finite element. That was something uh, related to the time when we were worried a lot about analysis time, but now uh, I think with all the fast solvers available, we do not worry about the number of degrees of freedom anymore. So, if um, there is a plate element which can work and we use shell element which is more comprehensive. It will not affect the analysis time much if you are talking about low to mid rise buildings. right? Yes, you are right that we may use plate element for uh, slabs, modeling slabs. Uh, if we already want to have a rigid diaphragm in which we kill all the, the in plane degrees of freedom and we just use a kind of a rigid link constraint with them, uh, but again if we use shell element it may not affect significantly your analysis time. Beam column joints uh, we can use center line dimensions uh, and uh, it can approximately account for panel zone deformations. Basement walls we can use shell element, uh, basement may act as a very stiff first floor obviously, uh, the base of that basement will either be having foundation flexibility or fixed support. right? So, the basement will be modeled as kind of a very stiff first story, right? because it will have all around shell elements around it 
यू बी सी नाइन्टी सेवन हैड अ कॉन्सेप्ट कॉल्ड ऑक्यूपेंसी कैटेगरी एंड बेस्ड ऑन दैट ऑक्यूपेंसी कैटेगरी द इम्पॉर्टेंस फैक्टर वॉज डिसाइडेड इन आई बी सी सीरीज ऑफ बिल्डिंग कोड्स वी हैव रिस्क कैटेगरी एंड इम्पॉर्टेंस फैक्टर इज नाउ द फंक्शन ऑफ दैट रिस्क कैटेगरी नाउ रिस्क अलोन रिस्क कैटेगरी अलोन इज नॉट अ डायरेक्ट सब्सिट्यूट ऑफ दैट ऑक्यूपेंसी कैटेगरी the definition of risk category 1 2 3 and 4 if you see for example 4 is defined as the essential facilities and there is a whole description of what essential facility is one is described as a building or a structure whose failure may not pose any potential threat to human life right for example a warehouse for example a structure where nobody lives right so that can be assigned a risk category 1 now 2 and 3 2 is defined as any category which doesn't fit in 1 3 and 4 so it means we have to only decide about category 3 uh, which actually means that failure of that structure pose a significant threat to human life right so in my opinion the residential buildings for example they should be in that category category 3 and uh, similarly some commercial buildings where uh, the failure can pose a significant economic threat both social and economic social means casualties deaths economic means disruption of business downtime 